Hi, I'm Ron with Lakeshore Learning Materials. We're going to use pinwheels to engage children in the learning environment. We're going to look at three specific characteristics so we can test and create unique pinwheels. Pinwheels spin. That's what they do because they're designed to. We're going to look at three specific characteristics of how to make a pinwheel work and then we will use that to have kids test and create their own. One, a pinwheel is designed to capture and hold on to the air. Like this one has bends in its blades, that's how it's holding on and capturing that air. Two, it needs one point to spin from. Now on this one there is a wooden rod that goes all the way through and that's the one point that it spins from. And then three, we need a source of wind or, or some sort of current of air so we can blow on it we can wave our arm around to create a current of air or take it outside for natural wind. For the traditional pinwheel, we have instructions at lakeshorelearning.com in our free resources. The instructions also call for a brad or paper fastener. And I'll also show you an option with a paper clip. You can use crayons to decorate it. You'll need a straw, hole puncher, and scissors. For our traditional pinwheel, we have step-by-step -step instructions and a template that you can use to cut out the pinwheel. Let me show you where I've gotten started. You'll have dotted lines you need to cut and holes you need to punch out. And for the dotted lines at the corner, they're going toward the middle, but not all the way. Once you have all your cuts and the holes punched out, you want to bend the holes in the outside to the middle. Then you can either use the brad or a paper clip that's been bent out. You poke it through all the holes to hold it in place. Now we add the straw. You turn it over and you poke the straw right onto the brad or paper clip. For the brad, there are two ends that you can bend out to hold the straw in place. Let's test out the traditional pinwheel. Now as your kids are making it, they can actually decorate both the front and the back side of that page because as you can tell, as they bend over the blades, they'll see the decoration they have on the back of the page come on into the front. And we have each one of our blades bent over to capture the air. And then we have it spinning from one point, which is that brad or that paper clip in the middle. Here we go. For the paper fan pinwheel, you'll need three sheets of construction paper, tape, an unsharpened pencil, and for options, a paper straw and a plastic straw. For the paper fan pinwheel, I'm going to use three sheets of paper and fold them all the exact same way. What we're going to do is fold down about a half an inch, just like that, all the way through. Get a nice good crease. And now all of the paper is folded the exact same way. Take one, fold it up, and then fold it in half. To keep our fan closed, We're going to take the two ends here and tape them together. I put a piece of tape near the top and one toward the point. Now with all three pieces of paper folded and taped, we're going to bring them together and connect them. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to bring a, put a piece of tape near one end and then another one near the middle. And there you go. Now with all of them taped, what you're gonna do is turn it over. And for each one of the connections between each one of the colors, you're gonna put more tape there as well to really secure it in place. So now what we're gonna do is add something to the middle for our point to where it can spin from. And for that, we can use our pencil.
For our paper fan pinwheel, we have the folds in the paper to capture the air, and in the middle, we're having it spin off of our unsharpened pencil as I hold it on both sides. Here we go. As your kids are playing with the pinwheels, they might need to make adjustments to make it work. And one issue might be with friction. Now friction is going to be that resistance when one surface goes across another surface and has a resistance, like the idea of the paper pinwheel going across the straw. And if there's friction, it's going to slow down the spin. So in order to adjust for this traditional pinwheel, I might loosen up the paper clip or the brad on the back to give a little bit more space between the pinwheel and the straw to have a little less resistance. There might also be resistance with their paper fan pinwheel based on what they put in the middle to have it spin around. Now I'm using an unsharpened pencil, but they can also try something like a straw, whether it be plastic or paper, or a crayon or a marker to see if that changes how it spins when they blow on it. We'd love to see all the pinwheels that they make. So post a photo or video on social media with the hashtag LearnWithLakeshore. I hope you enjoyed this learning at home video. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to Lakeshore Learning Channel to see more. Until next time, keep on learning. Keep watching our learning at home videos. Plus, visit lakeshorelearning.com for thousands of free resources.